Lafia. I'm Dr. Gloria Lattimore Peace, host and producer of OmniU Presents, the H3O Art of Life show. And today's show is on one of my favorite cultures, one of the, my favorite places, and I have two of my favorite people here to talk about Haiti. And I'm calling this show Haiti and Her Diaspora because so much of Haiti is in Chicago that I'd like to talk a lot about the connection between Haiti and, and Chicago. And of course, I'd like to introduce my guests and I have Jeanine Raymond, who is with the Friends of Haiti. And I have Dr. Ludovic Como, who is a professor of economics at, at du DePaul, DePaul and there are this your bio is so interesting because you're also our academic correct, director for two of the satellite campuses. Yes, I do some administration. That is a bit at yeah. O'Hare yeah. and Naperville. Naperville yeah. And then you have this bachelor's degree in business administration, a law degree as well. You had a Fulbright scholarship. And you earned from the University of Illinois at Chicago a joint MA and MBA, Economics and Finance. You have a PhD in Business Economics. And then you earned an MA in French Literature from the University of Chicago in 2005. You are a perennial learner. <laughs> you are always studying something. And you speak all of these languages, and I thought, you know, this is marvelous that you speak so many languages and you have all of this training and all of these diverse um, disciplines and you're an administrator and a professor and then I learned that you're also a husband and so you wear a lot of hats as they say. And the father of five girls. You are the father of five <laughs> girls. Then they went to school with you. I'm sure that some of those children must have been sitting in those classrooms. It is amazing and it's Thank wonderful to, to talk to you and it's wonderful to talk to you. And I almost named the show Teach Me About Haiti mm. because we don't know enough about Haiti. When I spoke to Janine, I said, you know, I saw the announcement that Ch the Chicago Historical Society was, was celebrating the birth, the birth of Chicago. And yet, very little emphasis has been on the fact that Chicago was founded by a Haitian, Haitian yeah. who was the first permanent settler. Settler, settler yeah. Jean Baptiste that, 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 was, that was here other than the indigenous population. So uh, talk about anything that you like to because it's a subject about which I cannot know enough. So I just g open up the floor and listen. Yeah. And you remember I told you this is my star. I let my star shine. Thank you very much. Well, the, you see, the, 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 if we start with the presence of Haiti in Chicago, and indeed it started uh, way back in the uh, late 18th century when uh, Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable came from, uh, from Haiti, precisely from uh, the city of St. Mark, uh, Haiti. He settled here and uh, he was a good uh, businessman, a good trader, a good diplomat also. He made good with uh, the indigenous population. Uh, married into them, and, and he, op he opened the gate for everyone else to come. And uh, people, uh, Europeans, who came after him, uh, bought from him, bought land, you know, from him. So he opened the gate, but uh, as you noticed, uh, there is little uh, acknowledgement. 
uh, given to him. And uh, I don't know of a big boulevard named after Jean Baptiste Point du Sable. Uh, we have the Ducebo Museum, we have a Ducebo High School. Uh, fairly recently, uh, there was that Ducebo Harbor that was uh, mm -hmm. uh, named after him uh, uh, mm -hmm. near the place where he settled. But uh, see, there is a very little recognition. See, the, the late mayor Howard Washington had uh, uh, reserved, designated a piece of land near Navy Pier to become a Ducebo Park. So we're talking something since the late 1980s. And uh, 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 it would take something like 12 to 15 million dollars uh, to uh, f secure you know, the, the, the piece of land, because it's at the, at the intersection, I understand, of Lake Michigan and the Chicago River, which is kind of near where uh, uh, Ducebo settled. So for more than 20 years now, uh, and then very, very quickly the late mayor passed away uh, without uh, concretizing, having the time to concretize the Disabled Park. But since then, for more than 20 years, the piece of land is there. For 12 to 15 million dollars, you know, there is no money to do a Disabled Park. And when we see around, you know, all sorts of big projects being carried out. Millennium uh, Park has been done since then. Yes. And what about the Olympic bid? Mm -hmm. right. I've read on the internet that mm -hmm. Chicago spent more than $100 million mm -hmm. just to pursue the Olympic bid that was not successful. Right. Yeah. But so yeah. No, no, but uh, uh, let me fill in uh, a little bit of the story. Uh, in the 50s, I was young when I came and they had a, what, a group called the Disabo Society. And only one member is still alive. And uh, the Disabo Society, what they really uh, are was all about, their, their uh, um, mission is for the Chicago Historical Society to recognize that Disabo was the founder of the city of Chicago, that he was black. Uh, the, the Chicago Historical Society at that time, which was the name at that time, had stated that it was a mulatto that came from Canada. And that's what the Disabo Society was all about. Constantly fighting the Chicago Historical Society to recognize that Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable was a Haitian from Haiti, from St. Mark, Haiti, who was the first settler at the city of Chicago, at the near uh, uh, where the equitable building at that time, it was the equitable insurance building, right at the uh, bridge of Michigan Avenue Bridge. It was, and that's how the meeting, we, I used to attend those meetings, I was very young, and, and it was what it's all about. Until it took quite a few years, quite a few years, before finally De Sable was recognized as the founder of the city of Chicago. So you're talking about the millions to be spent for Mr. De Sable Park and so forth and so on. The, and you, you yourself, you observe what happened uh, uh, not too long about, it was last month? No, not a mention of Disabled. Not a mention. There was a, a, a big uh, a ceremony that the Disabled, we have a Disabled Heritage Association. I didn't see any invite from that. We didn't receive any in invitation to, be, to even be part, be in the audience about that. And the so Disabled Heritage Association is the is an association within the Haitian community in Chicago that is uh, working for the past uh, 10, 12 years toward upholding uh, the Haitian legacy, you know, the Haitian heritage of, uh, of Disabled. Mm. And uh, so we mm. coalesce with mm. other organizations well, yeah. like... With the uh, Friends of the Park. Friends of the Park. Yeah, the Friends of the Park is the Very good ally. Uh, yeah. Very good ally. The one that... Uh, the Friends of Disabled also, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. friends of so there is a coalition of organizations so trying to achieve that Disabled Park has really a, a palpable, a tangible uh, 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 landmark of the 
presence, uh, the pioneering presence of Disable in Absolutely. the history of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. I have a book that was written by one of my colleagues called The Irritated Genie, mm -hmm. an essay yes. on the Haitian Revolution. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I think uh, Dr. Jacob H. Carruthers, yes. who, yes. for yes. whom the, the, center, the Carruthers Center for yes. Inner mm. City Studies is, is now named. And I think that is when I learned to love yeah. the Haitian yes. people and the Haitian oh. the Haitian legacy mm. because yes. it, it was just it made you feel so proud it, it not that you didn't think that African people uh, had done anything anywhere before then mm -hmm. but just to have a concrete Quit. example yep. mm -hmm. Of ordinary yeah. people yes. who yes. stood uh, up against yes. tremendous mm. odds, odds and forces, yes. you know, and mm. and uh, uh, I think there was an old movie on just recently, and it was a a movie about this woman falling in love with Napoleon. Yes, and um, it, I just stood up right in my living room and said, you know. They chased Napoleon out of Haiti, you <laughs> know, and, and so can you talk a bit about that? What is it? What is it among the Haitian people that gives them this courage and this drive for toward freedom and justice that that always is needed in the world? I don't know if it's the land itself, okay. <laughs> the land of Haiti, okay. because uh, 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 Christopher Columbus uh, landed uh, in uh, 1492, and uh, by the end of the century, by the late 1490s, uh, they were already having wiped out the natives, the Tainos. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the Spaniards had already brought the first African. Uh, in the early 1500s, uh, I'd already brought the first Africans in, 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 uh, in what would become Haiti. Yes. And history recorded that the first revolt dated, dated of 1509 already. Already. The moment they came, they, they, the came, they came. They came. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. They understood. And so it you was know. the tribal, it was, uh, and, me, it and was the tribe, but the but spirit. You, Absolutely. Of the tribes, Absolutely. the Igbos, you, yes, know, you know, yes, the Congo, the, the Nagos. Congo, the Nagos. But, but what happens is that the, the tactic of the colonizers, of the French, has been to kind of have a constellation of different tribes, you know, mm -hmm. uh, gathering there, although there were uh, 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 predominance of uh, people from the former Dahomey, the current mm -hmm. Benin. Yes, yes. So mm -hmm. This is why now by and between parentheses, when the Haitian goes to Benin today, you are at home. I mm -hmm. went to Benin, I would say I'm a Haitian, mm -hmm. and I get a hug. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People who don't know me, who I don't know. Mm -hmm. People from Benin. So then you had this constellation of tribe, you know, speaking different languages, and from that, you know, emerge our mother tongue, the Creole, mm -hmm. Haitian Creole. Mm -hmm. uh, but they found a way to unite unite and also uh, create into themselves this drive and trust in themselves, that, that, that self-confidence that we could make it because we are human beings, we are being treated like animals, we are things. The masters were treated their dogs better than to treat my ancestors and they decided one day that would not happen anymore. We would not take it. But what really made it for us is the emergence of a generation of extraordinary men. The first among whom was Toussaint Louverture. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was completely extraordinary in terms of, you see, the world knows about Toussaint Louverture. Right. But I could give you 20 names. But he was can a grandson. Give, can you put was a prince. in the list? Des Dessalines, number Dessalines. two. Oh. The yeah. successor of Toussaint, when yeah. Toussaint was taken by the Which French and exiled in, in France. Okay. Dessalines took over. The ancestor, Dessalines is my ancestors, by the way. Okay. My grandmother came, came, yes. uh, came so from this. But you have to understand that Toussaint mm -hmm. also 
was the grandson of a king. Of a king. In, in, yeah. See, y y king you know, the, the genie continues, the genius continues, mm -hmm. but you have to see who they were yeah. also. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You yeah. understand? But you, are, you also had the, the King Christophe in king the Christophe, north. Yes. Mm -hmm. You had the Capuala mm -hmm. I mean, I a generation of extraordinary men, but history reported that the drive came from the unifying factor that the Vaudou religion was. Yes, that is such a maligned and misunderstood spiritual practice. Absolutely. That, it, you know, you almost can't have a conversation without people mm -hmm. having all of these negative yeah. reactions. But I want to say that I'm, yes. I'm seeing this pattern um, that to me has to do with the fact that African people on the continent were traveling to away from Africa and to the various places like Haiti mm -hmm. and like here, which was not called America, mm -hmm. but was called the Turtle Island. Mm -hmm. They were coming and going all the time. They were intermingling. They were intermarrying. Mm -hmm. They were, some were staying, some were mm -hmm. returning. Mm -hmm. So that it is not surprising then that Jean Baptiste point, could come yeah. and be welcome mm -hmm. because he was not a stranger. Oh, that's right. It is not surprising mm -hmm. that the Africans that were later brought mm -hmm. by the Europeans were, could could intermarry and could intermingle with the indigenous people mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. because it had been their practice. Done. There yeah, are practice. so yeah. many books about this. Yeah. And yeah. I always like to say that we did not come in chains. Mm -hmm. We came of our own volition mm -hmm. when, because we were navigators and because there, I'm told that there is a current that if you put something that will float in the Atlantic, it will float to these shores. Mm -hmm. You don't have to really know how to get here. Mm -hmm. So we didn't come in chains. We came as free human beings. And I love it when you said we were human beings being treated by animals. We did not call ourselves slaves. Yeah. Yeah. The Absolutely. Haitian yeah. people never regarded themselves mm -hmm. as slaves. As slaves. And yeah. they did not accept yeah. or tolerate captivity. Absolutely. And the land made it easy to achieve because, you see, the, the name Haiti is an, uh, a Taino name. It's a Taino word. Of the, the Taino, the former... It comes the from native, the, native, the, the indigenous, tribe, the indigenous tribe, yes. uh, uh, population. population. Mm -hmm. It means land of mountains. Yes. So three quarters of the territory of Haiti is made of mountains. Mm -hmm. And we have this proverb that says, behind a mountain, there, there is another mountain. A mountain. Mm -hmm. To say that you may be powerful, but mm -hmm. there is one more powerful, more powerful mm -hmm. than you. Mm -hmm. And there is one more powerful. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the relativity of, uh, of things mm -hmm. on Earth. Mm -hmm. So then this uh, configuration of the landscape made it also possible to have you know, those Africans brought as slaves mm -hmm. and not acknowledging themselves as slaves. Mm -hmm fleeing toward the mountains mm -hmm. and forming communities. Right. We call them the Maroon. Maroon society. Mm -hmm. Forming communities. You had They were free. People. They were never free. slaves. Right. And they That's right. were refused ahead. to be, to be oh, slaves. Absolutely. And right. they were a headache for the <laughs> for the colonizers. Right. Because from time to time they would just Come you know down. storm and down. That's right. Storm down. <laughs> That's you right. Know. And so then so then you see if we Fast forward toward independence now, mm -hmm. which we achieved in 1804, that Dessalines proclaimed mm -hmm. after the victory on the formidable uh, expeditionary army sent by Napoleon, mm -hmm. the veterans of the wars of Egypt that he sent to put us back mm -hmm. into slavery. You see, when that force came, it achieved some early victories. Mm -hmm. And the leaders of the army, now led by Dessalines, because they had gotten to mm -hmm. and shipped him to France, right. they decided that they were going to radicalize the revolution, to radicalize the fight, the struggle, and they adopted the motto of cut heads, coup -tête, coup -tête, burn houses. Mm -hmm. 
I said it in Queer. Coupe Bulekai. That means cut heads mm -hmm. and, and burn the, burn the houses. Mm -hmm. So then the expeditionary army from France would march toward the territory to find the cities burned down. Mm -hmm. the plantations destroyed mm -hmm. because we said we preferred to die yeah. than, than, to to be slaves. than to be slaves. But when now you radicalize, you make a total war like that mm -hmm. in order really to get rid of the enemy through destruction, what does that make when you start the nation now in 1804? You started with a destroyed economy. Right. You started with a destroyed economy. We have to remember that the economy of the, the, the economy of Haiti was the most prosperous colony of all. Really? More than forty percent of France's exports at the time of at, at, at the end of the eighteenth century, at the time of the Revolutionary War, more than forty percent of France's exports were with Haiti. This is the reason why he sent Napoleon. That this is why Napoleon the sent this force. He could not lose this. Right. Okay. Napoleon sent this force and he sent Napoleon. And he thought it, that it would just send the yeah. force, take the colony back, and proceed to the United States to expand from the Louisiana Territory. That's right, the Louis Louisiana Purchase. Purchase. So mm -hmm. then with the defeat, having lost the war in Haiti, Napoleon could no longer support the, 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 the ambition, its American ambition, yeah. mm -hmm. but we and was forced to sell the Louisiana per territory. Yeah, totally. So this is a major contribution of Haiti That's right. into the U.S. You must, you mm -hmm. To come back to Napoleon, Haiti was so important for France, for the economy of France, then he sent his sister, his sister along with her husband, the general, mm -hmm. family, his family member, that's to show you how important it was. As the chief of the army. Uh, the, the chief mm -hmm. of the army. Mm -hmm. To keep Haiti the way it was. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. The and whole economy of the country of France was based, based on, on, Haiti. on Haiti. Absolutely. And then when now we achieve independence, starting on that destroyed economy, the entire world slave-based system decided to embargo Haiti. Haiti. Right. We got caught on the both. global, the whole slave economic system. That's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Called yeah. on the mm -hmm. So then, creating a situation of permanent scarcity, even a paranoia on the first generations, because we were living under the constant fear that they would come back. Mm -hmm. This is why you would see toward our history, you know, the, 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 all the governments, you see, everybody was a general. Every, I would be, if I were li living in Haiti 150 mm -hmm. years ago, I would be a general. Mm -hmm. Never go into any academy, you know, mm -hmm. but you are a general mm -hmm. because everybody is a soldier. Because right. yes. they might come back and you have to take arms and, and you have to fight. And you have to fight. Mm -hmm. And then to aggravate the mm -hmm. situation, being so totally I isolated, choking essentially, not being able to trade. 25 years after independence, the Haitian government accepted to negotiate with France in order to achieve the acknowledgement the recognition, to the be recognition to be recognized. of our independence yes. by France. Mm -hmm. Because we thought that no one else, including the United States, mm -hmm. would not trade with us. Worse, the United States was worse. As a matter of fact, the, in the Senate of the United States, oh, they were, they, they said, niggas and speaking French. Some senators in the Senate at that time say, what? Niggas speaking French? Oh, it was the uh, United States are quite adamant, uh, so not then, recognizing so Haiti. So then, France demanded an indemnity. Right. They wanted to be paid mm -hmm. for the loss of, of the slave labor yes. and whatever the else they imagined yeah, right. was yeah. theirs. Yeah. Yeah. They started demanding 150 million francs. In and from where was where was Haiti to get this 150 million francs? I can give you some quick information about that. Hmm. It was to be paid in five installments of 30 million francs in 1825 and in five years. The first one in 1825, 
when the argument was reached. In 1825, to pay the first installment, there was no money in the treasury. We had to borrow the 30 million francs from French bankers at the rate of 25%. And they would not give us 25% interest rate. Right. But they did not give, give us 30 the million. 30 million. They gave 24 million. Right. So they kept 20% commission. <laughs> so then we had to go out and, and take borrow. everything that there was in the treasury. Mm -hmm to put on it and give that to first pay, one. To make up. So the effort of paying this was further crippling to us. Mm. Right. We were never able to continue paying at that rate. Right. So f about a decade later, there was another uh, chief of state in France, uh, Louis Philippe, uh, repra replacing King Charles X, the ninth, who did the first agreement. He accepted to reduce the the, the, the payment, the, in the, the indemnization, from 150 million to 90 million. And then since then, we spent the entire 19th century and the first the, half of the, the... The entire 19th century. And the first half of the 20th century paying that pay money. That debt to France. We finished paying it in 1947 three quarters of our history. Any money that comes, the, the focus should be to pay back friends, to pay back friends. So then you see, it gives you a certain mentality. Right. A mentality of exacerbated, you know, scarcity. Because as an economist, because my, my economic theory of this situation is that, you know, the, the, the economics tells you that, you see, we all have needs. We have desires, we right. have wants, right. and we need resources to fulfill them. Right. But the problem that we have, this is the economic problem, is that we have unlimited needs. The more we have, the more we want to have. But the resources to fulfill them are limited. Right. No matter how wealthy you are, right. your budget is always not enough. Right. The budget is not enough in Haiti, indeed. But guess what? The budget is not enough in the United States either. Right. We have those huge deficits. Right. So then the idea is how you're going to increase your resources in order to provide for, mm -hmm. the, for, for those needs. All the more so when you're talking of a nation where there is population growth. So you have to grow your resources, not only to take care of additional population, but also to allow for an improvement in the standard of living of people year after year, so that, as we see here in the States, the current generation does better than the prior mm -hmm. generation. That was never achievable in Haiti. And then it's so, f it's so easy for United States and other people from other countries to always say, Haiti is a poor country. Haiti is the poorest country. Thank you for the professor right now to bring the background as to right. why Haiti How has so always poor, been it's the way it is. Impoverished. The exactly. That's right. That's right. When poverty is, is imposed yeah. That's right. upon a people. That's right. You know, and kept in place. You know, it's almost like sharecropping was here mm -hmm. after the so-called mm -hmm. plantation. Mm -hmm. yes. Then you had people who were working all year long and, and never, at the end of the right. year they owed money yes. and they worked the next year and they owed more money and they never could get out of it's the vicious exactly cycle. So you have a Haiti. whole nation exactly. rather than exactly. a family who go. is working all year and there doing all go. these things to try to That's conserve it. and try to, to to stretch yeah. and what yeah. have you and and never That's having enough yeah. because yeah. there's someone who says that you owe more yes That's someone who is keeping the books you that's haiti right now that's this it. is the result of what haiti is right now but that's why see, it is but we have to be honest historically honest to say because you have your audience and most likely there are people who know yes. about yes. the history of yes. haiti. Mm -hmm. i'm not going to present the situation of Haiti of as that of a total victim, mm -hmm. as if there were no internal, internal mm -hmm. factors mm -hmm. that aggravated the situation. Mm -hmm. I would be intellectually dishonest mm -hmm. not to That's say that. Truth. 
That's the truth. Okay, that means, so you see, when now you have this situation of, you know, we need to fulfill the needs, mm -hmm. the needs are increasing, mm -hmm. but the needs to fulfill those needs are shrinking mm -hmm. because of this kind of hemorrhage. Mm -hmm. You know, like the, it's like what Perot said, uh, the, the, that big hiccup sound, sound <laughs> but the hiccup is our blood that's mm -hmm. being sucked away, mm -hmm. you see. But then you would have hoped that, you know, the Haitian society would have bended together. And, and then of one mind. Mm -hmm. And some form of solidarity. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with that? No. Mm -hmm. Now you have the traditional elite, the well-to-do class. Right. They put the entire burden on the masses. Mm -hmm. They monopolized everything that was left after we kept paying, mm -hmm. you know, to themselves, and leaving those poor masses in complete poverty, age after age after age. And this is why now you have this situation of a people, you know, that went from poverty to misery and today to sheer destitution. Yes. This is what you call destitution. And uh, when I say today, I'm talking before the earthquake. Mm -hmm. Because now we got that earthquake one year ago that came to tragically aggravate things. Yeah. This is annihilation now. With aggravate things. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> then so then we have to acknowledge that if we had a different elite if we had a different bourgeoisie, if our bourgeoisie in Haiti had understood the historical mission of the bourgeoisie, which is to be a class of captains of industry, mm -hmm. a class of people who are looking after their profit, mm -hmm. after their money, of mm -hmm. course, but who have a certain idea of their country, who love their country, who want to do stuff for their country, even in an egocentric way even in an exploitive way. Mm -hmm. We're not going to say who has been mm -hmm. a good class. Mm -hmm. There is always this tendency, you know, to exploit the, uh, the poor people, but still, I have my country. I like my country. I'd like it to develop. Mm -hmm. Even that we didn't get from, the, from this bourgeoisie. They inherited that mentality of the French uh, colonizers, whereby they have no attachment to the land. Mm -hmm. They were sucking it up, to go away, enjoy their money. Tell me about the mulatto population. The French came in mm -hmm. and they spawned, mm -hmm. for want of a better word, mm -hmm. another version of the Haitian mm -hmm. um, who it, it seems to me gained some sort of privileged status because of the presence of the French blood mm -hmm. and and saw themselves as having a different lot Absolutely. from those who were pure African, African or yes. pure Indian they did not yes. see they didn't have share the world view no mm -hmm. because the, the, the this is a population that came with the slaves, uh, you know, just like you see spawning with the, the masters. But the French used to send their children to be educated in France also. No, those mulattoes, many those of mulattoes. them. Okay, so and these then, uh, were Europeanized. Yeah, yes. but an uh, African woman who would, who would mother a mulatto child became free. That was the price of free. That was what oh, you get. Uh, okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Became free. She did not stay a slave. Okay, and the children, and the children would be sent to uh, uh, be educated. Uh, uh, educated. Many of them, not all of them. Not all of them. It well, depends on yes. the father. Okay. You know, some fathers were very, very good fathers to, right. their, yeah. to, the, to their sons. But in a whole, this is what that population that Mulatto came but out but you see, early. It, it depends also. How early it is. In, in a, in a, uh, or since the beginning. Yeah. Or since the beginning. See, they forget were now. This is early. That middle population came, just, it, it wasn't slave and masters. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, at, at, at the time of independence. So that you get to class system. That's this exactly. Is where you get That's what they call the ruling class. The, the, the yes. And, oh, based, right. and based on skin color. To give you an idea of the proportion, at the time of independence, there were a little bit more than half a million African, mm -hmm. you know, people mm -hmm. of pure African mm -hmm. descent, 50,000 mulatos, mm -hmm. and there were about 10,000 
colonizers, French mm -hmm. colonizers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then, the, 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 so there were like 20, you know, Africans for one. Mulatto. That was a mistake, the French made, mm -hmm. by, by the way, historical mistake. Mm -hmm. The colony was so prosperous, they kept pouring black slaves there. Mm -hmm. So at a certain point, it became, they became overwhelmed mm -hmm. by, the, by the sheer number of mm -hmm. people, you mm -hmm. know. And this is why after the, the case of Haiti, you know, in the, the other, you know, uh, slave-based uh, powers, you know, uh, that had based their economies on slavery, they did not allow their colonies to have such disproportion mm -hmm. of whites and, and blacks, mm -hmm. you see. So now, to go back to that issue of, of the mulatto, you have also to understand uh, one thing that the French did, and that became a major hurdle, a major social burden in the, throughout the history of Haiti, arguably to this day, is the issue of skin color. Now, those, the offspring of the deeds of those French men with African women, the lighter their skins, because you know, when people of two races, you know, black and a white mm -hmm. are having kids, you know, some of them would be so white they could pass, as mm -hmm. they say. Mm -hmm. But others would be more, you know, would ha inherit more of the African type of, you know, look features. or features. Thank mm -hmm. you. So the, the lighter your skin, the more privileged you are. You are. Mm -hmm. And there was a system of assessing the worth of the human being based on your skin color. Mm -hmm. And there were all type of shades. I mean, in the colony, they would find a difference between you and me mm. in terms of skin. And you are kind of lighter. You would get more uh, 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 privilege. And I'm lighter than her. Mm. Poor sister Jan in here would, oh. be, would be in trouble Bend. because she's darker. That was as sick in mm -hmm. terms of a social system. There were yeah. 128 skin shades in the colony. 128 skin shades. Sure. With a name for each of them. Grimo, Molato, Sakatra, Griffon, Griffon. Griffon, Griffon. 128. Yeah. So then, and people would be, you know, assessing each other, positioning each mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. toward, you know, yes. Positioning themselves mm -hmm. toward the other, choosing the mates, yes. choosing yeah. wives, yeah. choosing husbands. But let me interject too. Mm -hmm. In the 1930s, and uh, you know, with the American occupation too, that did not help at all. Yeah. That is what this, uh, they found, and then that was nurtured also. Mm -hmm. That that did not help us. You know, from the uh, yeah, Lisco and Vincent, yeah, the, the American, American occupation. occupation. You have to yeah. say that American oh, occupation. Absolutely. That absolutely. did not help us. That, don't forget now, this is the 21st century, the, 20, the 21st century. We are suffering from that also. Yeah. So still. it was never, yeah. and I'm going to suffer, it was never resolved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It was never resolved. But all this said, you see, myself as a student of history, you know, before I went into economics and mm -hmm. university <laughs> teaching, I was a high school teacher. I taught literature, I taught history, you know, <laughs> I love, all Asians are historians. Yeah, that's right. You know, yeah. that 1804 thing is right. like <laughs> getting us crazy. It's all over us, okay? okay? So, but what I'm saying now is how, where do we go from here? What is the future of the country? Because here is this really complex historical situation. How it's do you bring unity when you have that kind of division, that kind of hair splitting mm -hmm. division. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have to say, and m m my mother over here can correct me, I stand to be corrected as they say, I think it has kind of come down. It's not as harsh, you know, the skin color situation. It's not as, you know, pronounced as it used to be. It's still there. It's still there. It's still there but not as pronounced as it used to be, or maybe it's more subtle. And it it's subtle, to. I think it is. <laughs> because we were talking about that with the elections. Mm -hmm. It is, I think, yeah. very, yeah. very good for this word. Yeah. Because uh, before, you know, we, you, we started here, we were, uh, uh, we were chatting mm. about the situation, the political situation, because yeah. right. we're going to have presidential right. elections. Right. This and Sunday. this is exactly what we are addressing ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, the fact that it is still, it's a, it is still, this, this is still very 
pronounced in Haiti. Okay. Even now, mm -hmm. in March 2011, mm -hmm. it is still one of the problems that we you have. You see, in normal times, it may not be voiced. But in times of, let's say, political contest, mm -hmm. like now, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. The lines it, are drawn. It, it will surface. The, because the lines... Someone will say something. Okay, the, and the, the lines are drawn. Because, they know, it's one way, you know, to kind of hit some sensitive chord mm -hmm. in the masses, you know. How mm -hmm. does someone tell Aristide that he can't go home or tell someone not to allow him to go home because he may disrupt the stability of the country for which he was the leader. Yeah. Yeah. That's a reality, though. Uh, because and and before being the leader, where he was born. Yeah. I mean, yes. the man is it is homeland. Yeah. But he has followers. Uh, oh, yeah. He has followers. Yeah. Last June, there was a conference in Chicago. Maxine Waters uh, uh, was stating at that conference that uh, no matter what kind of presidential elections you have with ha uh, in Haiti, you would have to consider Aristide's party, which is called Lavalas. Because but they're it's not allowing so many of his party. You understand? And, and so he came back, I think, yesterday? Yesterday. Or was it yeah, he went back. He, he went back. back he is back. Yeah, he's back. He's okay. back. But he's, you know, he's, he made a speech, you know, and questioning the issue of this election going mm -hmm. to happen this Sunday, right. you know, two days from today, uh, and that his party was not allowed to participate, which is... Uh, I'm not sure why. How democratic is that? Pardon me? How democratic is that? Yes, yes, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's what happened. But I told you, that's what uh, yeah. Maxine Waters was saying, that yeah. No, yeah. an election would have to be done considering you would, a Lavalas, that his party is called Lavalas, would have to be part of it. But, but uh, then something else just happened also, I mean, a couple of months ago. Now, you have the former president for life, Jean-Claude, baby dog Duvalier. I just w wondered if you were ever going to bring, <laughs> bring up, up the Duvaliers. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you see, the, uh, uh, he came back to power. Uh, I'm sorry. That he came back to Haiti. Who apply? Please, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Jesus, <laughs> help us. Help us, Jesus. No, that would not happen. He, he came went back. back. To, but, but, but you know what? I mean, that regime who stayed 30 years in power, you know, and that was uh, uh, conceived, implemented by his father, uh, uh, François Papadoc de Vallier, in brilliant manners, unfortunately, from the negative side of things. If this man had used yeah. his brain power, his will, François de Vallier For the good of the country. After, yeah. In terms of willpower, of political power of doing what he wants to do. He makes the link with our <laughs> founding fathers. Mm -hmm. This man would not would not buy, you know, he would not bow to anything, including the Americans. There is a this is another issue. The diplomatic history of the Papadoc regime with the Kennedys, then LBJ, then Nixon this is like something to write an historical no, novel. No, no, the man, the man would have written a couple Ex of novels. Yes. Well, you might expulsing, as well. Expulsing, sure. expulsing yep. two American ambassadors from Haiti. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Papa Doc Duvalier. He was that terrible. But if he had used that willpower. For the good of the country. For the good of the country. It would have been like Taiwan today. Because I recall I was a teenager. You were already here. Mm -hmm. In the late 70s when his son was in power. There was a remarkable period of prosperity in the country. I remember my father was a businessman and mm. business was good, you know. We're talking starting the mid-1970s mm -hmm. and the second half of the 1970s. The economy was growing at a rate of 5, 6, 7%, mm. percent, which was unprecedented. There were a lot of assembly industry jobs that were coming from zero we had, in a few years, 100,000 jobs that came to Haiti. Haiti was the first producer of baseballs. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all the factories, all the factory yes. goods. So, so then there were money. And, so they, and, and I remember, I was in high school then, you know, the late 70s, and the word in the propaganda press, you know, was that Haiti was going to become the Taiwan of the Caribbean. Haiti was the first touristic destination of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. 
The statistics are that in year 1973, there were more than 200,000 tourists that went through the airport of Haiti. We're not talking the cruise ships. This is where we were. And? And then political instability okay. set in, you know, in the 1980s. Actually, factually what happened in the late 1970s, like you had the second oil shock, 1979, mm -hmm. 1980, okay? that sent the world economy into recession. Mm -hmm. And since now more than 80% of Haiti's trade is with the United yes. States, when the American economy went into recession, the orders got cut drastically for those 100,000 workers. People started losing their job, you see. And then when that happens from a standpoint of economic policy making, a government is to kind of restrain spending and, you know, manage the budget in a way to provide some caution, some economic stabilizers for the poor because they are losing their jobs, because you know there is hardship getting into the society. What did the government of Jean-Claude Duvalier do? In 1981, he got married to the tune of almost five million dollars. It was the most lavish marriage that ever. There was a waste. Then I was a young man in college, I remember, in Haiti, so I could see that, you know. So the uh, West, they did exactly the contrary of what they had to do. So, supposed to do. so the discontent started mounting toward the early uh, 1980s until he had to go in 1986. So here we are within five minutes of the end of this program. Of this program. And there is so much it's more. So much. To it's cover. complex. There's the Haiti so, so much is complex. Uh, if you notice, know this, this time the professor, the I let, I, I, I myself, I'm sort of. <laughs> <laughs> admiring with whatever he said, I didn't get a chance to really. Uh, but the rest what, is for you. Please no, no, no. <laughs> there is, but it's so much to be said. It's so much to be said as to what's going on now after the earthquake. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. much to be said, and so much discontent on on the uh, on our side now. Are there I'm more, talking about are diaspora. There efforts still, there had been a lot of efforts to raise money to send things uh to send resources oh yes that uh, was there's, oh. i got someone sent me oh. uh, a, a letter about an organization they founded called trust and joy to help all mm. jesus children international uh. it's supposed to uh. be raising funds for oh. haitian children and you don't really know which no, ones that's right. are mm. valid mm. that's right mm. uh, at this point a lot of businesses. So, what are uh, what what's a good source to find out how you can contribute to the Haitian people who are still suffering the suffering the effects of all of the things we've talked about, including the earthquake, the loss of of, of trade, the loss of employment. We so far nothing has been done after well, the earthquake. Well, who you do know, you Chile. call when you want to know if you want to give the something? Consulate, uh, the, the, cons con the, Haitian consulate, consulate, the Haitian consulate, the Haitian consulate in Chicago. In Chicago, in Chicago. that would do right. Downtown, and, 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 and also, right. well, and, and also maybe the churches. You know, you have a the Haitian churches. Uh, not the Haitian. Haitian churches. I, I don't Which? know the Haitian churches doing okay. things there, but uh, like you see. Last weekend, I was in Washington uh, at the Haiti Advocacy Summit with uh, a group of diaspora organization mm -hmm. because I'm part of a Haitian think tank of Haitian scholars and academicians, mm -hmm. uh, the group for reflection and action for a new Haiti, the GRAN. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were, it's a federation of several chapters uh, throughout uh, in Haiti, in Canada, France, etc., the U.S. I'm president of Grand USA, so I represent the Grand and that uh, that Washington thing. The, the Haitian Diaspora mm -hmm. Federation mm -hmm. was there. The Haitian mm -hmm. Congress mm -hmm. to fortify a number of Haitian diaspora organizations, mm -hmm. meeting with the leaders, you know, the, the black, uh, the, the leaders of the Black Baptist Church. Oh, five significant groupings of outstanding spiritual leaders. I mean, that was a blessed thing in my life to meet these people, the significant and brothers also. and sisters, and uh, representing something like 2,000 black churches in this country. Some of them working in Haiti for 20 years. So I think it's a good, and they have a track record of doing okay. good work. So the yeah. churches 
and of course the Haitian organizations, the, the Haitian, Haitian Congress, the well, yeah, vote. but the consulate, the Friends the, of Haiti. The, the, well, no, we are we you do don't not do raise, uh, we don't do fundraising. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, but the thing is, the Haitian consulate would direct anybody as yes. to, because they are in direct uh, okay. uh, contact, yeah. contact uh, with yes. Haiti every yes. day, okay. and they know exactly what the, the okay. thing, yeah. you yeah. know. Okay. Uh, but right now, what we really need, we need the voices, mm -hmm. to, most w along with money, to say, what about Haiti? What is being done? Right. You know, you know, we're not even talking about raising funds now, but what happened to the funds that were raised? Already oh, raised, yes. all, all right. right. How is it? You know, mm -hmm. how is it being uh, uh, distributed? Mm -hmm. What's going on? What is the partition? Who, who is in charge? Uh, I, I was telling uh, uh, my friend here that, uh, and some other people, uh, the half, the, the east side of the city of Chicago is landfill. It's landfill that is practically. Okay. You know, by the Museum of Science and okay. Industry, uh, by University of Chicago, right. is landfilled. Right. What happened to the debris in, in Port au Prince? Port au Prince is an old city with old structure. They could have used those, you know, uh, uh, when use, the, use that debris to, to expand the, the city. The, right, right. Expand but the city, and modernize it. Because modernize it right, right. for this but but, but but you see i have to say that you see that there, there, there is a co they're uh, taking uh, us uh, out are we taking us out they're taking oh, okay. this is okay this that, is that, your that, fault because yes, you have yes. this important meeting yeah yeah and yeah you yeah, could have continued right. on yes I, uh, I really have to go but but th there are a number of sites uh because there is an, a commission an interim commission for the reconstruction of haiti uh, 